Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at extending WordPress blocks with hooks, particularly JavaScript hooks. To do this, we're going to use a class of filters in WordPress called block filters. These are a set of JavaScript and PHP hooks in WordPress we can use to modify existing block properties. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to focus primarily on JavaScript hooks, but there are some helpful PHP ones as well. At the start, it's important to point out that sometimes extending blocks is a good direction to go in, and other times rebuilding the blocks so that you could really change everything that you need without potentially breaking things is actually a better approach. So as we go over some of the different filters you could use, this is an important thing to keep in mind. Of course, over the next several videos, we'll also look at some examples of when you might want to go in different directions. Now, diving down into the specific JavaScript block hooks that are available, or I should really say a collection of some of the hooks that are available, we have blocks register block type. Now this one allows you to hook into any of the settings with JavaScript that you would usually set when building a block. Then we have get save element, which will focus specifically on the save setting and letting us override that one. Then we have get save content extra props, which is a pretty cool one that lets us interject new props or override props into our save function or save component. Then we have some simpler ones like get block default class name, which will let us modify the class name that goes out by default with this particular block. This is a helpful one you might need to use. Another helpful one is just the ability to get and filter block attributes for a block. So we have that ability as well. And you'll notice that a lot of these are sort of subsets or could also be done in part through register block type itself, but we have more specific narrower ones as well. And finally for our list here, we have unregister block type, which could be a helpful one if you want to make sure that certain block types do not show up in the editor. Now, as I mentioned, there are more of these and more will probably come, but this is a good example of some of the core ones that you'll come across. Now, I want to mention a warning at this point that when you modify or filter saved block content, so you override the save setting, you may or potentially will break existing blocks. What happens in the WordPress editor is that the content saved in the database has to match what is in the save setting. So if you modify that with JavaScript for existing blocks, it will break. Now, this is something I'll talk about in depth in coming videos and pointing out which one of these filters may particularly do that. But I want to point this out at this point. It's also important to mention the PHP filter render block. This will also allow us to override the save settings, but it'll let us do it on the PHP side where we won't break blocks. So we'll also look at this in depth in a future video. Now, in addition to these JavaScript block hooks and our PHP hooks, we also have more hooks like the editor hooks. We have the ability to hook into the block edit component specifically, as well as the block list block or the block wrapper that appears around a block inside of the editor. And then more editor hooks will come as well. Now let's back up and look at what these look like in practice. In order to use JS filters, first we have to enqueue our JavaScript. Now you can include filters in with the same bundled code that you output for building a block. However, I like to break these up into two separate files and it all depends on your preference. However, they can be potentially combined together. The important thing is that you have to enqueue whatever JavaScript is that you're gonna put your filters into. Then we're going to call WP hooks add filter and we'll show how to write this a little bit cleaner, but add filter comes with three parameters. We plug in the name of the filter we want to hook into, and then we have a new thing that's different than PHP filters where you have to give your filter a unique name. And then the third parameter is the callback function that actually executes what the filter should do. So then our third step is to create that callback function with our custom filter code. So let's imagine that we have a blank JavaScript file in queued up and we first want to grab add filter from WP hooks. Depending on what build tool setup you're using, you may also be able to import add filter from WordPress hooks as well. Then we would call add filter and the first parameter we would pass in is the specific filter we want to hook into, which is usually written as like module and then the actual filter itself. Then we have to give it a custom name and we'll look at some examples of this, but this has to be a unique reference sort of describing what it is your filter is doing. And then finally, we have our callback function with the filter itself. So this is what it looks like at a high level. Now let's look at what it would actually look like with a specific hook. So what we're gonna do in this one is pull in add filter 
And then we're going to call blocks register block type. So this will let us hook into any of the register block type settings. But specifically, we're going to look at extending a paragraph block. And then we'll write a callback function called extend paragraph block. All right, so now let's look at that function extend paragraph block. We would define it just like any other function, and it comes with two parameters of the settings, which is all of the different settings for a block, and then the name of the block specifically. Now, this filter will run on every single block that you have set up or every single block type. So you want to run conditional checks to make sure that you're only modifying the ones that you want. So let's imagine here that we are going to modify our paragraph block. So we write a conditional check for that. And then we could override the title settings. Now we will look at how to override all of the specific settings and when you might want to do them and what you might want to be careful about. But in this example, we're just overriding the settings title. And then at the end, we need to make sure that we are returning the settings back. So this is all pretty simple JavaScript. We write a conditional check and then we modify what it is that we need. The other nice thing is that this is very similar to PHP hooks, which hopefully you are already familiar with, with the one difference that you do need to set up that second parameter of a custom name for your filter specifically. And again, just to hammer this in, filters have different parameters, but all filters must return something. And it's usually going to be the first parameter that is passed in. Now, before we wrap up, I want to make sure that we check out the documentation for block filters. This is going to be in the developer handbook and it's under filter reference and the block filters. So first one. Now, the first one is block style variations, and we're going to look at that in depth in its own section in the course. So I'm going to skip past that one and come down to the filters and we see blocks register block type with an example, get save element, some of the ones that we've mentioned, as well as some other ones that you could check out too. So make sure as always that you're checking out the documentation to get an idea of what is available as well as oftentimes get samples and examples. So that takes us through a high level overview of extending blocks. Over the next couple videos, we're gonna look at a bunch of these in depth and get comfortable with how and when to use them and possibly when not to, because remember, sometimes rebuilding your own custom blocks is actually going to be a little bit smarter approach, especially in long-term potentially, when you're looking at the option of extending blocks.